Check out this week's specials at Miles Franklin. We've got 2022 Silver Maple Leaf coins, only $3.40 over spot, and we've got 2023 Kangaroos, only $3.39 over spot. Email info at Miles Franklin or call on 1-800-822-8080 and tell them that Mario or Maneco 64 referred you. Wednesday, March 8, 2023, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So hyperinflation, we haven't spoken much about it lately. But I believe the specter of hyperinflation is still out there. If anything, it's there's uh, even more uh, probability now. I think it's fairly imminent. And despite Jay Powell's hawkish testimony yesterday, yeah, it's still on the cards. So I even have uh, a playlist for hyperinflation. And one of the videos... I did about hyperinflation is from four years ago uh, and the title is hyperinflation is the loss of confidence in the state and its currency so yeah it's not just prices rising <laughs> very sharply sometimes in the millions uh, but it's also loss of confidence in the state in uh, all uh, institutions of society as well and uh, going through all the news yesterday, and I usually don't, uh, yeah, I, I try to like stay away from things, but uh, it, it's been very difficult. And, and all the stuff that's happening, especially in the United States and here in the UK, and those are the two countries that I cover the most because of the language and because I am in the UK, uh, it all uh, dawned on me yesterday, this is getting uh, really out of hand. So I'll give you some examples because uh, hyperinflation is not just an economic phenomenon uh, uh, to do with a, a lot of debt, a lot of money printing, uh, uh, economic stagnation, right? The size of the state, uh, war or uh, crises. It, it's to do with uh, the public also losing confidence uh, in the people who manage things, who manage the currency and uh, the state so and I think uh, that part this of the those kinds of symptoms are really getting crazy and uh, four years ago when I spoke about this or three years ago about the symptoms yes I, I could see that evolving <laughs> but it's been quick and uh, the, the things that are happening seem uh, outlandish but I'm not surprised because I, I knew they would come out because the truth always comes out so in the US a lot of you are familiar with what Tucker, Tucker Carlson came out with about the January 6 tapes I think that's highly significant of course there are a lot of people out there who won't uh, believe it who won't want to know but a lot of people are waking up on that uh, front. Here in the UK, the equivalent, I would say, are these lockdown files. Um, and they're putting the spotlight, of course, on Matt Hancock, but I, I think the whole government is to blame for this. Someone's even called Alison Pearson of The Telegraph, which is the newspaper that came out with this uh, leak. She even wrote yesterday, Matt Hancock should be arrested for willful misconduct in public office. Well, I, I don't think it's just Matt Hancock because there, he had a boss called Boris Johnson. So it's the whole government. But to hear that in a, one of the biggest, well, probably the biggest circulation broadsheet in the UK or uh, it is quite amazing. It's something that you probably would have heard back in uh, 1922, 1923 Germany in the aftermath of the war, in the aftermath of the collapse of uh, the Kaiser and all the political mayhem that was going on in Germany. Uh, at the time, Germany was, uh, people were concerned that it would break up into, uh, I think, the Bavarian uh, Communist Republic and all, all these things. There was a lot of political assassinations, uh, 
a lot of mayhem and they had a lot of debt. Uh, prices were rising quite sharply. The hyperinflation really only took off in 22-23, but it was all a combination. So what, what else have we had that makes me think things are crazy? Well, a lot of you probably have heard of uh, Cy Hirsch and his article about Nord Stream 2. I won't go too much into it. Uh, you probably know who is blaming for it. So yesterday we get something in the New York Times saying that U.S. intelligence uh, knows who it is, that it's uh, a group uh, that is pro-Ukrainian trying, and, and it's crazy. And I, I read the uh, comments on Twitter, the reaction. The people who are awake are saying, yes, right. <laughs> we know that this pro-Ukrainian group, uh, yes, is in Washington, D.C. So crazy things there. The other crazy thing I saw yesterday is uh, Janet Yellen, she said... What did she say exactly here? And I, I thought that was funny. Uh, well, yeah, sorry. Uh, she said that um, we could have a financial crisis. And she said basically that climate change would be, uh, to, be to blame. Uh, such crazy things, right? And on the uh, geopolitical side as well, I see a lot of tension. Uh, that's something that was happening uh, during the Weimar hyperinflation. Uh, because you had the, the question of reparations, the, um, the, the Versailles uh, Treaty that had put a lot of uh, burden on Germany and the French had occupied parts, parts of Germany as well. And the, the Germans lost a lot of their coal. And the same thing's happening today. And uh, the biggest news, I think, uh, geopolitically in the last 24 hours or so is that China now is warning of potential conflict with U.S. over containment strategy. So it says here, Foreign Minister Xin Gang calls on Washington to commit to guardrails around Taiwan. So, and coupled with that, we have news, and it came out just after my video from yesterday, where I covered how Singapore had increased its gold reserves by almost 30%. It came out just after I published my video that China, the People's Bank of China, bought almost 25 tons in February. So they've bought 102 tons in the last four months up to February. And that's very unusual for them to publish it like that every, to let the, the public know every, every month Usually they update every two or three years and then they stop. So they're clearly giving a signal here that uh, they're going to keep buying gold. They're not happy with what's going on geopolitically. And am I taking sides? No, I'm just trying to uh, um, give you an idea of what's happening and why I'm still concerned. And I think actually it's becoming even more imminent. And have you noticed that uh, the CPI numbers, which are prices really they're continuing to rise they, they've surprised on the upside even in switzerland the other day in the eu in the us in the uk and it's gonna get worse so now i'm going to reference uh human action by ludwig von mises one of the uh, founding fathers if you want to call it of the austrian school of economics and i'm a proponent of the Austrian school and the Austrian schools really I would say <laughs> the complete opposite of the Keynesians uh, the Austrian school they want freedom they want small government sound money free markets uh, rule of law so everything that we don't have today and uh, von Mises talks about hyperinflation or what he calls also the crack up uh, boom or in German it's the Flucht in the Zachwetter which is the flight into real goods and uh, I don't think anything's changed because uh, if you notice Jay Powell yesterday he said that the dis disinflationary process has started but it's still not good enough notice that disinflation it's not deflation and you understand what I mean by this? What Jay Powell and a lot of the Keynesian economists are saying, they just want to 
bring the rate of CPI or price rises back to around down to around two, maybe even three or four, because now people are saying that uh, if we bring it down to two, there could be a, a huge uh, event in the economy, in the market. So we need to just bring it down to three or four, and that should be enough. So I'm going to go to page 427. Uh, and I guess you could access this in the free PDF, but if you've got the book or you want to buy the book, I recommend the Mises dot org website which is really the home of Austrian economics on, on the internet and uh, help them out and buy it from there but uh, yes it, it starts on page 426 here the anticipation of expected changes in purchasing power but I'm gonna skip to page 427 and uh, this is what von Mises says the course of a progressing inflation is this at the beginning, the inflow of additional money makes the prices of some commodities and services rise. Other prices rise later. The price rises affects the various commodities and services and has been shown at different dates and to a different extent. The first stage of the inflationary process may last for many years. While it lasts, the prices of many goods and services are not yet adjusted to the altered money relation. There are still people in the country who, who have not yet come, become aware of the fact that they are confronted with a price revolution which will finally result in a considerable rise of all prices. Although the extent of this rise will not be the same in the various commodities and services, these people still believe that prices one day will drop. Well, here they're, they're not even talking about prices dropping. They're just talking about the rate of increase dropping. So keep that in mind. That's what disinflation is. Disinflation is not prices dropping. It's prices rising at a slower rate. Waiting for this day, they restrict their purchases and co concomitantly increase their cash holdings. As long as such ideas are still held by public opinion, it is not yet too late for the government to abandon its inflationary policy. Of course, by government, they, they mean the central bank and, and the treasuries of the world, and they are tied at the hip. <laughs> uh, if they weren't, uh, they wouldn't have helped with, uh, with the lockdowns of all the money printing, right? And the deficit spending and the QE. But then finally, the masses wake up. They become suddenly aware uh, of the fact that inflation is a deliberate policy and will go on endlessly. A breakdown occurs. The crack-up boom appears. Everybody is anxious to swap his money or currency, I would say, against real goods, no matter whether he needs them or not, no matter how much money he has to pay for them. Within a very short time, within a few weeks or even days, the things which were used as money are no longer used as media of exchange. They become scrap paper. Nobody wants to give away anything against them. It was this that happened when the continental currency in America in 1781 with the French mandats uh, territorial in 1796 and with the German mark in 1923. It will happen again whenever the same conditions appear. If a thing has to be used as a medium of exchange, public opinion must not believe that the quantity of this thing will increase beyond all bounds. Inflation is a policy that cannot last. So yeah, the Federal Reserve, they don't want to uh, stop inflation. <laughs> they don't want to like deflate the money supply, which is deflating a little bit back to previous uh, levels. Uh, they don't want to bring prices down. <laughs> they, they just want to uh, decelerate uh, the rate of increase and, and that's that goes for all the uh, the other central banks and that's why 
when we see the first sign of trouble in the economy, as Jay Powell said, he covered <laughs> his derriere yesterday. He said, yes, if things get bad, we'll, we won't raise uh, more or keep it uh, high, the rates that is, for longer. So he's covered himself because he wants to continue this policy of inflation. And um, why do I think it's even more imminent now? Well, because the inflation is not going to stop. And now society has gone mad, <laughs> in my opinion. All, all the stuff that you read is, is just like uh, my wife and I were talking yesterday. Uh, things are going um, really crazy. I mean, 30 years ago, uh, if someone told me these things would be happening uh, in 2023, I would have, uh, yeah, had a tough time uh, believing it. Just a... Uh, a little note on uh, Rudy and hyperinflation. <laughs> What's the relationship? Well, his uh, kennel club uh, name is Ken's duo Rudolph. He was born born on the first of December. Unfortunately, uh, Billy passed away on the twelfth of December, and then my wife and I were gonna wait a while to get another puppy. But we, we always kept an eye on things. I kept an eye on the Kennel Club website. And usually uh, the Shih Tzu puppies, there's not many breeders uh, near the London area. They're usually like far away. And uh, I saw this uh, announcement and they had four puppies and it was very close to where I live. <laughs> and uh, Rudy was the only male puppy, three sisters. And I really liked the picture. And we decided to go and visit and have a look. And then uh, we decided to put a deposit down. And uh, we hadn't decided on the name, but uh, we, we saw the pedigree name, Ken's Duo Rudolph. And we thought, yeah, Rudolph is quite nice. And you can call him Rudy. And uh, some people thought we might keep the Billy name because Billy was the second Billy we had. But it, we thought it would be nice to uh, have a, a different name this time. And of course, uh, the guy who was in charge of the Reichsbank during, uh, well, during World War I and through to the hyperinflation in 1923, his name was Rudolf Havenstein. <laughs> so there's the connection. Did I pick that name because of that? Maybe subconsciously, but... The co it was co coincidence that they had named him uh, Ken's duo Rudolph uh, already. Uh, and one thing about Havenstein, he was a lawyer by training. And if you look at Jay Powell, he was a lawyer by training. And, and so was Lagarde, <laughs> uh, who the two major central bankers of the world are lawyers. And so was Havenstein. That's another uh, interesting fact to keep in mind. So let's quickly look at where the markets are then this morning. Yes, of course, gold and silver got hit hard, uh, especially in US dollar terms, actually in pounds and euros. Well, pounds especially, it was virtually unchanged because the pound dropped almost as much <laughs> as gold. Uh, I actually went into town yesterday and I had a look at the uh, pawn shop that I like to look at. They didn't have that much silver, but they had this really nice, nice uh, beard, one ounce silver round, peregrine falcon on the other side. So I thought I'd buy that. It's really nice. I, I never, I, I had, didn't have one of these. So it's not much, of course, but uh, um, hopefully I'll be stacking more silver and gold soon if my fiat balances rise again. So we got spot gold at 1814. So it's up just a, just about a dollar. The range has been 09 to 1815. Uh, silver is at 2005. Yes, disappointing uh, move in silver. But uh, as I said, it's still the thing to have in my opinion. So the high has been 2015, the low 1989. Uh, yes, the stock markets 
had a pretty uh, dreadful day yesterday. Uh, the Dow was down 575 points, 1.7 percent. S&P was down one and a half. Nasdaq was down actually one and a quarter percent. Uh, this morning, uh, markets a little higher. Dow futures up 38. Nasdaq is up six. And S&P is up uh, just under four points. Currencies have settled down as well. They, they got hit hard because of Powell's hawkishness. Hawkishness. Uh, the pound is unchanged, 118.30. Uh, the euro is unchanged, 105.45. Uh, the dollar is up a quarter of a percent versus the yen, 137.52. And the dollar is down 0.2 versus the U1 at 697.89. Uh, Aussie dollar is up a quarter at 66, just below 66. Uh, the dollar is unchanged versus the Canadian dollar, 137.55. And the Kiwi dollar is up 0.2 at 61.17. So yeah, the dollar looks very strong, you know, dollar's king. But uh, now I always remind me of this chart here uh, ever since I learned about this website, fxtop.com. And you can see what the dollar's really done in the last 70 years versus real money. And that doesn't just go for the dollar, it goes for all the fiat currencies. So when you have a day like this, yeah, take take a step back and, and, and look at the bigger picture, I would say. To the general commodities, uh, so platinum, yeah, that's come off. It's up this morning, but it's off about thirty dollars since yesterday. It's at nine forty-two. Uh, crude oil as well. I think WTI was above eighty yesterday. Right now we're down a quarter uh, from the overnight close at seventy-seven forty. Uh, Brent is uh, down slightly at eighty-three oh one, and I think it was around eighty-six yesterday. And high-grade copper uh, is unchanged at three ninety-eight. Uh, last but not least, we're going to look at the uh, the bond market and the, the yield curve, the U.S. Treasury yield curve. Uh, that's inverted even more. It's uh, inverted over 100 basis points from the two-year to the uh, 10-year. And uh, the rates yesterday, the yields really picked up at the short end and the middle of the curve. Actually, the 10-year yield almost didn't move. And some people might think, how, how is that possible if uh, uh, Powell was hawkish and said he was going to raise rates? Well, it's because uh, the bond market participants, investors expect that Powell and the Fed will be able to control inflation in the future. So they, they, they don't think that uh, the 10-year or the 30-year deserve a higher yield. So they didn't sell that. They sold, of course, the short end because the Fed is going to keep raising rates and keep it there for longer. So, for example, the two year is now above 5% at 5.05. And it's up another uh, four basis points overnight. The 10 year, though, is still below four. So over 100 uh, basis points in Virgin. And, and that hasn't happened since the 70s under Volcker and uh even Bloomberg now is saying that this could point to a, a hard landing of the economy. And you can bet when there's a hard landing, we're going to go back to the, well, we're going to get the print, printing presses running again. And uh, that's when I think we're going to start seeing really a loss of confidence by the public. Um, the prices are going to keep rising anyway. <laughs> they're, they're not stopping. And uh, even Powell has told you that because he wants to keep uh, rates. Uh, yeah, he doesn't want to have deflation. He want, just wants lower, <laughs> lower growth in inflation. So let's quickly look at the uh, UK uh, government bond market. So we have the uh, two-year yield. That's picking up. That's not going to help the housing market. Uh, it's almost at 390 now. It's up 10 basis points. Of course, that's been uh, hurt the gilt market by the comments from Powell yesterday. 
The 10 year actually hasn't moved as much. It's at 388 and the 30 year as well has stayed pretty steady at 423. So I'm going to wish you all a very good day. Take care. Bye.